As you sing, I'm calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generation. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses. The one who opened up the ocean I need you now to do the same thing for me Come on, you sing Oh God, my God, I need you Oh God, my God, I need you now how I need you now Oh rock, oh rock of ages I'm standing on your faithfulness On your faithfulness I'm calling on the God of man upon the lonely I know with you all things are possible on. I'm calling on the God of David yes I am who made a shepherd boy courageous I may not face Goliath but I've got my own child Lift up your hand and worship Him this morning. My say, you hear your children. You hear your children now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You answered prayers back then, and you will answer now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You were providing then. You are providing now. You are the same God. You are the same. Come on. You moved in power then. God.
You freed the captives and you're freeing hearts right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. Come on. You touch the lepers and I feel your touch right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. I'm calling on the Holy Spirit, Almighty River, come and fill me again. Come and fill me again. Come on, church, just sing as a prayer. Come and fill me again. Come and fill me again. I want to just declare over your lives. Come and fill me again. Declare over your situation. Come and fill me again. Declare over your circumstance that you're facing. Come and fill me again. Declare over your family this morning. Come and fill me Come and fill me again. Come and fill me again. Come 
And uh, let's arise, we're good our confession, and after that I'm going to lead you with the help of the worship team, a short chorus to prepare our hearts for the message. Today is Pentecostal Sunday. I am deeply loved, greatly, greatly blessed, blessed, and highly favoured. Look at somebody and say, you are deeply you loved, love, greatly blessed, blessed, and highly favoured. Favor. Amen. Three things, love God, love people, love, love life. God. And very important, something about yourself. I am who God says, I am. I have what God says, I have. And I can do what God says, I can do. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. God spoke to us, as far as our church is concerned, four things that He did in the past and He will continue to do. That is, enlarge, stretch forth, lengthen, strengthen. One more time. Enlarge, stretch forth, lengthen, strengthen. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 2. You know, we don't really have an idea what he wants to do. But he told us that, go ahead and claim his promise. Isaiah 54 verse 2, that was 20 some years ago. Four key words, enlarge, stretch forth. That is in KJV. Lengthen and strengthen your tent, your church, your physical building, your influence. You know, and God did that in our midst. It is him. The one who calls us is the one that provides. To God be the glory. Amen. And as far as that is about quantity, how big? As far as the quality of the church, this is what the Lord said. The seven P. Let us confess together. Amen. Benang first is a praying church, a praise and power packed church, a peaceful church, a personal church, a propagating church, a possessing church, and a prevailing church. Why a possessing church? It is because like Joshua and Caleb, we take after their spirit and we take after the way they do the work of God. Go forth to possess the land filled with milk and honey. That's where we are. We confess that time when the Lord gave it to us, we don't have any clue. You know, Penang is an island. Land is very expensive. Everybody says that. We are aware of it. But when God says, go forth and possess, Praise God, that's where we are. To God be the glory. Amen. Holy Spirit, amen. You are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Father of mercy and grace, you are welcome Come in this place. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit. Welcome in this place of me. 
closer to you. Your power renew. Nothing compared to this place where I can see you face to face. I worship you in spirit and in truth. I'm reaching for your heart. You hold my life in your hand. Lift up your hand. Let's cry out to the Lord together. Oh, Rabba, wa we shumbiri be ye bossa salama. Him be here be ye bossa saraba. Him bahakaraba wa we shumba karaba. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Lift up your hand. Let's cry out to the Lord together. Oh, we we need you, Holy Spirit. We need the fire of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Hallelujah, to eliminate sin and deceptions that throw at us. From the by the enemy, oh hallelujah! Oh, we thank you. It is the Holy Spirit that able to erase and expose all self righteousness. It is the Holy Spirit, uh, hallelujah! Oh, able to burn away everything that is superficial in our daily walk, in our practice of Christianity, and in the church. Uh, anything that is superficial, oh hallelujah! Holy Spirit, let your fire burn. Burn, burn, purify, and remove everything that is superficial, and reveal the very substance of the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, and the substance of the Word of God. Holy Spirit, no need you eliminate sin, no need you expose self righteousness and bring it down, and no need you burn away everything that is superficial. But we also pray, Holy Spirit, let your fire, let your fire usher the entire church. And usher everyone into the supernatural. Hallelujah! The operations of the gift of the Spirit, the manifestations of the fruit of the Spirit. Most of all, oh hallelujah! Into the supernatural, where we see Jesus as the King of Kings and as the Lord of Lords, and He is the coming King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah! Amen. Oh hallelujah! Give the Lord a hand. Give the Lord a hand. He is. High and lifted up, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus to us, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Hallelujah, Holy Spirit, we need you, we need you, 
We need you because you are the comforter. You are the advocate. You are the helper. You are the one, hallelujah, being sent, hallelujah, into our lives and our hearts, hallelujah, and into your church, whereby, amen, to reveal Jesus, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, to every one of us, hallelujah, and to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Holy Spirit, lift up your hand and begin to just thank the Holy Spirit. He's in our midst. Amen. He is in our midst. Hallelujah. Welcome Him. Welcome Him. Hallelujah. Lift up your hand. Hallelujah. Begin to just receive. Receive. Receive the precipitation. Receive the dew that comes from heaven. Receive the divine fire that God has lighted within your soul. Allow the fire to engulf you. Allow the fire, hallelujah, amen, to set your entire being on fire. On fire. On fire. Yes, hallelujah. For the English service, the Mandarin service, the Nepalese service, the Hokkien service, and beyond these four walls, Holy Spirit, let your fire come Come, come Holy Spirit Come, come upon your people Your chosen people Hallelujah Not by might Not by power But by your Holy Spirit Holy Spirit Holy Spirit Hallelujah Amen Amen One more time Come Holy Spirit Come, Holy Spirit, fall on me now. I need your anointing, come in your power. I love you, Holy Spirit, you captivate my soul. And every day I grow to love you more. Come. Holy Spirit, fall on me now. I need your anointing, come in your power. I love you, Holy Spirit, you're captivating my soul. And every day I grow to love you more. I'm reaching for your heart. See you face to face. Hallelujah. I worship you, the Spirit and in truth. I'm reaching for your heart. You hold my life in your hands. Drawing me closer to you. I feel your power bring you. Nothing compares to this place where I can see. Us. Come, 
We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, come and visit us. Come and dwell among us. Take our place, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! 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 In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, worship team. You may be seated. I would like the picture of dry bones, and I shall read to you from Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out of the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. It was full of bones. Full of bones means once upon a time there was life, but now all that remained is dry bones. Some of us, we were once upon a time full of life when we come to know Jesus. The abundant life was bubbling, simply, you know, swelling up inside and overflowing. But now all that remain is just dry bones inside us. Verse 2, Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley. Indeed, they were very dry. The scripture acknowledged, if you think, feel, somehow you figure out that you've been dry and you're very dry, the scripture agreed with you. Yes, it's very dry. But God has got a plan to turn it around. Verse 3, he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? It's not son of man, can this bone move? It's not son of man, can these bones somehow be repaired, restored? No. God has got a bigger plan, better plan. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? In the eyes of God, no matter how dry your situation, God wants you to live and live abundantly, triumphantly. Paul knows the Spirit of God deeply, intimately. Apostle Paul. That's the reason why in the book of Romans he says that I'm more than a conqueror through all this and the love of God that strengthened me. I'm more than a conqueror. I live. God wants you to live. He knows the situation you're in. Ezekiel answered by saying, so I answer, O Lord God, you know. And he's simply acknowledging, it's beyond me. If you say these dry bones, a valley that is full of dry bones, and all of them shall live, and it will come to pass, O Lord God, you know. And so God gave him responsibility. Knowing about dry bones in your situations, in your life, it's not enough. Or even the situations, circumstances around you. You know, the spiritual conditions of your family, the spiritual conditions of the church, the spiritual conditions in the kingdom of God, the spiritual conditions in the world. People are confused with spirituality, with things which is superficial. Like there's this confiscations of sword watch, you know, of the color and all that. It's as though like if we confiscate those watches by swatch because of rainbow color, we are doing something spiritual. It's more than just that being spiritual, you know. And so the responsibility given was not just outside those who know. If you see it, take ownership. That means God says, you're responsible. So often when we see there's a need, when we see there's a cry, when we see there is a crisis or a situation that is not right, 
we just wait for somebody to step into the situation and hopefully that somebody will do something about it. But not in this case. So if God revealed to you something very personal, God is also wanting you to do something about it. Again, he said to me, the first time God spoke to Ezekiel is, can this bone live? And now the second time he said, well, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. That says, the Lord God of these dry bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you, you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. And then you shall know that I am the Lord. When God asks a question, He will also provide the answer. So many times when we ask a question, and we thought that we wait for God to give an answer. You know what I mean? Or somebody will come along to give an answer. God call, God always provide. God can call, call us to do impossible things, but God also will provide us the strategy. He will also provide us the steps. He will also provide us the resource to get it done. Since the day of Moses, you know, God asked the question, can you enter into the promised land? And then God says, you will, if you follow what I say. Joshua and Caleb, they saw the difficulty. The promised land also entailed problems. But with the problems, they see beyond the physical. They see the promises of God that it can be done. So when God calls us, He will also provide. So He says to Ezekiel, prophesy. The answer lies in your mouth. Speak out. And say what I want you to say. And when you begin to see the situation turn around, you will begin to understand, I am the Lord. Amen. Obediently, this is what Ezekiel did. So I prophesy as I was commanded. He took it as what God said to him, something needs to be carried out. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly rattling and the bones came together, bone to bone, indeed, as I look. The sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. We give up easily and too early. We started off enthusiastically when God says, do it. Can be done. And we say, yes, God has spoken. But when we encounter delay, then we take it as, mm, it's not God's will. It's not God's plan. Ezekiel was told to prophesy, verse 4. There was some form of result, you know. There was noise, there was rattling, bones came together, bone to bone, and then sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over. But far from the result of, can this bone live? Well, that's what God said. These bones shall live, but it's not. And God said the second time in verse 9, He said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath. That says the Lord God, come from the four wings, north, south, east, west. O breath, and breathe on this slain that they may live. Obediently, Ezekiel did the second time. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet. Hallelujah! Not only upon his prophecy, you know, that this slain become alive. They stood on their feet, on their own, without any, anyone to prop them up. 
And the next thing is, they become a mighty army. Oh, church, you know, I want you to know that your situation is impossible, your, your situation is difficult. But if you would obey God and begin to speak the word and prophesy and begin to call upon the wind from the north, south, east, west, the wind of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, amen. And when the wind of the Holy Spirit begin to just touch, hallelujah, this slain, amen, and penetrate into every part of their bones, hallelujah, the marrows, and every part of their sinew, and every part of their joints and flesh, they becomes alive. How long did he prophesy? I don't know. I can only imagine that we have got 24 hours a day. And so Ezekiel has got 24 hours. He did it in one minute, one hour, one moment, or maybe one day, one night, I don't know. But the valley is so huge. There was no loudspeaker. There ain't any kind of a broadcasting equipment or even like the, the mic that I have, the sound system. Two things. It's either he stood there, he prophesied, the wind of the Spirit carry his word, begin to just touch nationally by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out from the mouth of God. In this case, Ezekiel is not God, but he's an instrument. The word that he spoke is like God has spoken. And he just filled the entire valley, filled the entire valley from the top to the bottom, every noobs and crannies and corner. And suddenly the bones just responded to dry bones. Or maybe... He faithfully just walked the valley and prophesied and prophesied, prophesied and prophesied. Dry bone leaves. Let the wind of God come upon them. I don't know. But one thing I know, he obeyed. And the result is beyond him. Did God promise him an army? You know what's an army? It's not numbers. It means that this Dry bones become alive and they are dressed with armor. Armor. They have got helmet, you know, as well as they have got shield. They have got sword. It's not just a naked dry bones human being becomes alive. But they become an army. More than that, they look strong. They look disciplined. They look like they are ready to take command. Church. That's what God can do to the valley of dry bones. There are so many dry bones surrounding you in your situation. It could be ill health. It could be financial crisis. It could be marital challenges. It could be children or adult children that they are rebelling. There are so many. We don't know what to do. We are at a loss. We can just Google and we receive a lot of knowledge. This is what you ought to do. That is what you need to do, you know. But we are not motivated in spite of knowledge abound. We don't even have to be afraid and feel ashamed to talk to neighbors and loved ones nowadays. You go to a strange city, you want a place to stay, Google. You want transport? Grab. You want to eat something that is very exotic. Say you're in Kuala Lumpur and you want the best Italian pizza. You know? Not Nasi Lemak, but you want pizza. You just Google. It will take you there to Damansara, such a, such a place. They sell the best pizza and Italian cuisine, you know, in Kuala Lumpur. So we have learned not to ask people, not to look for help. But we're on our own and we're doing fine, generally speaking. But the dry bone situations remain unresolved. And there is always a gap in our hearts. What shall I do? When I go back to Penang, I'm going to face the same situation. Now, I'm away for a few days in Kuala Lumpur. I'm doing fine. You know? But I can't be in this mode of escape. Uh, escapism all the time. When I go back, it's going to be back to square one. Well, look at the picture of this man. He go on his knees to pray. The first rule to overcome 
dry bones in our life is on our knees. The second rule, on our knees. The third rule, on our knees. You pray until these dry bones live, stood upon their feet and become an exceeding great army. Your situation, God is going to turn around and use that situation to serve you. They become a great army to your advantage, not to your disadvantage. The dry bone means it appears as though like something it's working against you. You know, it's not contributive at all as far as your life is concerned. But God intends to turn the dry bones around, not take you away, but raise up those dry bones, stood upon their feet, become an exceedingly great army at your command. And suddenly you find that you have grown an inch taller in terms of wisdom, leadership, faith, how to go about to handle situations. Your dry bones become an exceedingly great army. Hallelujah. He prophesied. The Bible says that then this breath or this wind. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 6 tells us the wind goes towards the south and turns around to the north. The wind wears about continually and comes against on its circuit. That means the wind will just move sovereignly. Nobody can control. It talk about the Spirit of God. Neither the dry bones can contain the wind, the breath. Okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 5. As you do not know where is the way of the wind or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child. So you do not know the works of God who makes everything. We are not in control of the dry bones or the situation. All that we can do is yield ourselves to the wind, to the breath. Hallelujah. And to the sovereignty of the Holy Spirit, allow the Holy Spirit to speak through us. Hallelujah. And pray through us. It's interesting in John chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 8. Here it records concerning the new breath. You know the story too well. It says, there's a Pharisee, his name is called Nicodemus, a ruler of the people. Hmm. A ruler. What does that mean by a ruler? That means he is a CEO in today's context. He is a chief. He is a man of stature. Midnight, he came to see Jesus. Why did he want to see Jesus midnight? I don't know. It could be daytime. Jesus was just too busy with so many things, you know, over the women, over the men, over the blind, over the deaf, and over the children. So he's smart. He needs some private time, quiet time, uninterrupted time with Jesus. So he went to see Jesus. He talked about, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from God, and no one can do these things, do these signs that you do unless God is with him. What signs? Jesus taught with authority. At the same time, he fed the hungry. At the same time, he healed the sick, caused the blind to see, the deaf to hear, and the, the, the mute to speak, and the crippled to walk. So he says, all this I can see from teaching to doing miracles, God is with you. So Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly I say to you, you want to understand all this? There's only one way to understand it. You need to be born again. Because if you are not born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Dickenimus verse 4 said to him, How can a man be born again when he is old? I'm already so old. So it's at night. How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, one cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is of the flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is of the Spirit. 
Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Verse 8, the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. It is not about something very mysterious. It talks about the sovereignty of the Holy Spirit. And he desire, you know, he desire to bring forth this experience. Anyone that come to him, he wants to indwell you. He wants to make Jesus real to you. In fact, I'm going to be ahead of myself a little, then I will come back. Well, there's something about this verse until of late I begin to understand. John chapter 16, verse 8 to verse 11. And when he has come, referring to the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. We who are born of the Spirit, suddenly we can become so aware. In the Spirit world, these three things, they become so glaring and we become so aware. You know, but before we are born again, Basically, we are aware about food, shelter, clothing, as well as success, failure, and how much money we made and all that. Those things are everyday practical things. But to be quickened by the Spirit, and suddenly these three things that stand out, sin, righteousness, and judgment. The day when I was born again, suddenly I was so aware about sin. I was so aware about righteousness. I was so aware about judgment. Sin. Because I've never seen it in the light of the scripture. That all of us, we are born in our mother's womb. When our mother conceived us, we were born in sin. Righteousness. What is righteousness? It's not outward righteousness. It is the holiness of God that is so holy. And that it just causes you to to break down and cry out to him and say, oh, have mercy on me. Of judgment. You realize that he is more than just a God of love. But he is also the King of kings and the Lord of lords. John make it very plain. His judgment has already come upon the ruler of this world. That means the devil is being judged. But someday all of us will see him not as our saviour, but also as a judge. That should make us want to live our life in such a way that we are able to honour him. Now, I keep my eyes on the time. So because of that, I'm going to Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 and reveal to you and share with you what it means by when we have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, suddenly we are so aware of Biblical definition of sin, biblical definitions of righteousness, biblical definitions of judgment. This one cannot be revealed by the seminary, neither through books, neither through conferences. It is a conviction that is so deep, that is so deep, that it cuts into your very core, and suddenly you begin to understand. Wow. The kingdom of God that Jesus talked about, it's about the understanding about sin, righteousness, as well as judgment that is revealed only by the Holy Spirit. Back to 16 verse 8 to verse 11. When he comes, so many people mistaken. Oh, you know, when the Holy Spirit comes, I'll have joy. I have this goosebump. I feel like dancing and all that. Those are just outward manifestation. And some say that when the Holy Spirit is upon me, I feel so hot, so hot, so hot. There are others who say that when the Holy Spirit came upon me, I feel icy cold. You know, I just feel so icy cold. Well, each one experience they are different. Because in the manifestation, 
Fire is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Water, it's the, another symbol of the Holy Spirit. You know, love, joy, peace. These are the fruits of the Spirit. But primarily, when we have an encounter with Jesus, and especially with the third person of the Trinity, and we are specifically so aware of the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. These three things. What happened in the book of Isaiah? Let's look at Isaiah chapter 1. In the year King Uzziah died, when something dead, it's over. Stop going back to keep revisiting because God has something else better. He worshipped King Uzziah. Isaiah worship King Uzziah. It's just like the British people, generally speaking, they adore Queen Elizabeth, they adore King Charles. Now he's called King Charles. I mean, generally speaking. So, during Isaiah time, he adored King Uzziah. It is a period of mourning, you know, weeping. He's trying to grab a hold of himself. God will show up when you are at the pit. Don't keep looking at the pit. Lift up your eyes. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and the earth. So he says, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne. Here he is witnessing the coffin of Hosea, the funeral processions. But there the Lord says, I reveal to you. When you're at the pit, who I am, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe was filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. Two covered his face, two covered his feet, and two he flew. Okay? It talks about who God is, how righteous is this. He is. Even the celestial being, the heavenly host, they have to cover their face, you know, cover their feet. And, and at the same time, another pair of wings servicing, okay, rendering worship to the Lord. And one cry to another said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And the whole earth is full of His glory. It talks about God reveal His righteousness for who He is. Isaiah. Then it says, The post of the door was shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, He discovered what sin is. Sin is not about people. These people are sinful. These people are living in sin. These people, they are so enslaved by sin. Sin is to begin with. Like the word S I N sin, the center alphabet is I. It's about myself. He sees himself as verse 5. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips. And suddenly he's so aware. When the Holy Spirit is upon you, and suddenly the spotlight is upon you, and you begin to see those things that you have never seen before or even those faults that actually obvious to your loved ones. But they dare not point out to you for fear that you will flare up and you will lose your temple, you know, and scold them back or react and whack them, perhaps. But he says, oh, woe is me. I am full of sin. For I'm undone because I'm a man of unclean lips. Just the very fact that my lips are unclean, that disqualified me. And I dwelt in the midst of the people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Church, you want to know how spiritual a person is? Check the conversation. It is the conversations that reveal the person. James says this candidly. A person who is spiritual will not involve in gossip. You know, the tongue that wag will reveal the tongue that is not spiritual. 
That's what James said. So suddenly he sees sins, you know, as it is. The way God sees it, he was so convicted. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And then one of the sheriffing flew to me, having in his hand a live coal which he had taken from the thongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away, and your sins purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Strange. The one that redeemed you, know your condition, is the one that is going to pick you up and send you. When God deals with you, normally He is not dealing with just your fault. He is trying to clean you up so that He can use you as an instrument of righteousness. The devil will be all out to keep condemning you and telling you, you know, that you're hopeless, you're useless, and you will never be able to rise to the occasion, but not our God. Amen. Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here I am, send me. And God says, go. Because of time factor, I will not go into detail. Verse 9 onwards is talk about, I'm going to pour my judgment, but you go and deliver the good news. You know, Isaiah, you go and tell them, the Lord is God. Hallelujah. Okay, judgment is supposed to come upon this particular town, this particular city. It says, anyway, go, I send you. He went. The 120 that gather at Upper Room. Let's go back to the book of Acts. The book of Acts. Okay. And we are aware that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Next moment, Peter preached a very powerful message. And in that message itself, three things being revealed. He says about, we have sinned. Because we crucify Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs. He's the altar of life. And we have taken by lawless hand, have crucified and put him to death. But God raised him up and loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by it. So there was a prophecy that David saw in Acts chapter 2, verse 25, I saw the Lord always before my face. He is at my right hand and that I may not be shaken. Okay? So, Peter preached about this. Peter also preached about the righteousness of God. And he told them, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand. I will make your enemies your footstool. Then verse 36 the righteousness of God, okay? That let all the house of Israel know assuredly, God has made this Jesus whom you crucified. Not only he's righteous, but he's going to judge the world, the Lord and Christ. Three elements, sin is exposed. Number two, righteousness of God is revealed. Number three, the impending judgment. And the result the Bible tells us that on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit come upon them like a mighty wind, the Holy Spirit emphasized treating sin, righteousness, as well as the judgment of God. And the result, 3,000 souls were added. Hallelujah. Their hearts were being cut by the message and the preaching of Peter. Oh, 3,000 souls. 3,000 all turn to the Lord. Pentecost happens 2,000 years ago. Book of Acts, chapter 1. A promise was given. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Chapter 2, the Bible says, like a mighty wind. It happens. It just happened as the people learn to cry and pray. Okay. For 400 years, there was a gap from the book of Malachi to the book of Matthew. There was this silence of God. There was no communication. Okay? But God desired to do one thing. 
to descend and his fire to fall upon the 120. And that fire spreads. What is the biggest denomination in my conclusion as far as Pentecostal is concerned? Can I have the chart? Okay. Assemblies of God, worldwide, 53.7 million, and so on and so forth, go all the way down. About the turn of last century, God visited this man called William Samor at Azusa Street. And the doctrine of baptism of the Holy Spirit was hardly heard of. The seminary don't teach. The Bible school lecturers, they were against it, about speaking in tongues for hundreds of years. Martin Luther was the one that resurrected the faith, the judge shall live by faith. But God is in the house. He will not let his church die. So not only the doctrine of faith is being resurrected by Martin Luther, according to the book of Romans, the just shall live by faith. Multitudes got converted. And at the turn of last century, at Azusa, this man called William Seymour, and God began to pour his spirit upon him. It is through his willingness. He preached night and day. Miracles, signs, wonders. Many mainstream Christians begin to question concerning who is this man? What kind of power he has? Again, it is the same thing that happened. You know, that in the book of Acts, they said that, is this of God or not? But I tell you, fire spread. The Pentecostal fire spread. Can I have the other building? the plain building that happened in Azusa that is in California. To this day, the building still stand as far as I was told, okay? But it is from here, just to tell you a little bit, that baptism of the Holy Spirit begin to spread, okay, to the Atlantic, you know, and later on, all the way to Europe, Asia, and beyond. By the time when he reached Penang, it was the year 1953. There was this lady called Evelyn Hatchett. She was on her way to China to preach the gospel, to take the gospel to the Chinese-speaking people. She learned as much as possible about Cantonese. But lo and behold, by the time when her ship, you know, today is 8 hours, 12 hours by plane. Then it was about 3 months, you know, 6 months. By the time when her, her ship reached this part of the world, Penang, China fell into the hand of the communists. Church, God is always in control. All things work together for good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose. She discovered there's a big group of Chinese speaking Cantonese somewhere, Campbell Street, you know, downtown. So, since cannot go to China, then China has come to Penang. So she stayed back to minister to local Chinese that speak Cantonese. That's how our church started. Not by might, not by power. God is always in control. Amen. So as far as your life is concerned, you don't see the connections and the dot. Some of the trial, the testing you're going through. Keep going down on your knees to pray, to pray, to pray, to pray, and to trust Him. And even if the answer is not forthcoming, but at least you know you have already prayed. At least you know they already surrendered your problem to God. You know, the other half, you just have to trust Him. Your part is just to keep yourself in prayer and keep yourself in prayer all the time and crying out to the Lord. Let me have the picture of the man kneeling down to pray before we conclude. Amen. Let us... Bring our situation before the Lord on the day of Pentecost. It's more than just worship and have, have a good time. It means willing to confront our situation face to face, all the dry bones, and believe God that He will provide an answer. And He has got a plan for us. Amen. And for our dry bones. Hallelujah. Will you please stand? Oh, hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Oh, Rabba, Rabba. Hippiki kukaramawa ushita, Rabba. Lift up your hand and be like that man. Pray. Yes. Situation may look bleak. Pray. Situation may look impossible. Pray. Situation may look dry and barren. Pray. Hallelujah. Lift up your hand. Kubakaramawa ushubakaraba. Hey, bakaramawa urambo yeba. Meke kukarabawa ushipakaraba. Mekarabawa usansa karaba. Hu bakarabawa ushubakaraba. Oh, bakarabawa ushitiri sosaraba. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you lift up your hand, you are entering into the realm of the supernatural. As you lift up your hand, hallelujah. Amen. You are saying, oh God, please intervene. As you lift up your hand, you are saying, the Lord, I'll do my part. I will prophesy. I will pray. Hallelujah. I will intercede. I will declare your promises. Lord, I will just trust you. Lord, you will intervene. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you, you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Put all your hand down. How many of you, you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit this morning, Pastor? on to pray together with you. Hallelujah. A prayer of faith. Hallelujah. Anyone, put up your hand and say, I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Anyone else? Anyone else? Put up your Put up your hand. Put up your hand. Hallelujah. Put up your hand. Come on. Put up your hand and say, yes. Yes, pastor. I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Just lift up your hand. Amen. Lift up your hand. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Thank you. Father, you see handing raised, Lord. I commit, Lord, this individual to your hand. Put that hunger within and Lord, cause, cause the Holy Spirit to just descend and come upon that individual, that brother, that sister right now in Jesus' name. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Break forth in tongues. Break forth in praise. Break forth in worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many of us, it's been a long time since we've been refilled with the Holy Spirit. Can I see your hand? I want to pray together with you. Anyone else? Quickly, put up your hand and say, yes, I want to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. Father, you see hands being raised all over. Lord, right now, as they bow their hearts before you, right now, as they humbly come before you to acknowledge that they need the fresh touch of the Spirit. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be filled again. Be filled again. Be filled again. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. For the rest of us, let's continue to cry out to the Lord. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit, fill me with your power before we are dismissed from this place. Come, Holy Spirit, fall on me now. Hallelujah. I need your Let this be your cry. Let this be your cry throughout the week. Amen. Pentecost is not just one service. Pentecost is a way of life. Amen. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Jesus.
I worship you Spirit and in truth I worship you in spirit and in truth Amen We are called to be His weakness Can I have the picture of Acts 1 8? You will be my weaknesses it's the same Holy Spirit that empowers them. And it is the same reason why that power was given. You will be my witness. More than a reason, it is a mandate from the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ, to the apostles then. And now, to all of us, who live in the year 2023 after we are touched by the Holy Spirit changed and transformed by the Holy Spirit the Bible says you will be my witnesses Amen Hallelujah lift up your hand Father there are so many every one of us we are the vessels Lord that you have touched and Lord you can use us to be a powerful witness wherever we are, at home, in our working place, or when we travel to do work elsewhere. Lord, whether it's local or foreign countries, Lord, 24-7, we are your witness. Thank you, Lord Jesus, the young and the old. Hallelujah. Amen. And Lord, the ordinary and the extraordinary in our midst. Oh, thank you, Father, that you are so special to all of us. You have chosen us. You have picked us up. And Lord, you want to use us. Hallelujah. And you raise us up, Lord, from dry bones to become mighty army so that we can be a powerful witness for you in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and the, unto the uttermost. In Penang, in the northern states. Oh, in in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, East Malaysia, West Malaysia, and on to the uttermost part, Hong Kong. Amen. Taiwan, Japan. Hallelujah. India, Europe. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Africa, and even to America and beyond, and to New Zealand, as well as to Australia. To God be the glory. Come Holy Spirit, we are the weakness. Empower us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's just give the Lord a hand. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah.